Here's a new old saying for you. If a politician stokes you emotionally, making you shudder and swoon, you are being used. The abuse will follow soon. Rules of Engagement for Texas, November 4th. With the bulk of the world going one way, the USA is standing alone on more and more issues, refusing to join in in banning landmines and cluster bombs, protecting children, recognizing indigenous peoples, or even basic human rights. Even going so far as repudiating treaties already signed. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty explicitly prohibits us from commercial nuclear transactions with non-MPT countries like India. The MPT also demands two things to which we are also not complicit. The reduction of our nuclear arsenal and no enhancement of our nuclear weapons. And at the same time, we're condemning Iran, who has followed the treaty's constraints to the letter. Iran obeys the treaty, and we cry foul. Israel won't sign the treaty, and we look the other way. We violate the treaty yet feel we have the moral authority to dictate terms to other nations? Now I'm against nuclear power for a myriad of reasons, beginning with the fact that it's economically unviable. Without subsidies it would not exist. The carbon expressed in construction of a plant is much greater than the carbon saved in its operational lifetime. In its everyday functions, a certain amount of radioactive gases are regularly, routinely released into our environment, and we still don't know what to do with the trash it creates, other than hide it. Still, it does exist, and as long as it does, and there are treaties that cover and govern how we deal with it, we should consistently follow those laws. Continuing with laws and treaties and acts, The Status of Forces Agreement has yet to be signed in the bloodied sands of Iraq. How strange that the tyrant is so concerned to be covered by law with this one simple act. The flames of the warlord have shown no respect to national borders up to now, as of yet. Though the occupation has you in approval, would lack of a law mean the army's removal? The invasion was not legal, let us not forget. Is 
bloodthirsty troops have crossed into Iraq, into Pakistan, even crossed the border to Syria, pushed Georgia's conflict with Russia, in fact, paved the way for the lawlessness of Ethiopia. He has sullied the soil of his very own home with a recent deployment of an active battalion. He has claimed the power to decide on his own if laws were written to his satisfaction. The flames of this warlord have shown no respect to national borders up to now as of yet. Though the occupation has you in approval, would lack of a law mean the army's removal? The invasion was not legal, is something we should not forget. So why such concern that his protracted stay in the land of two rivers have a legal appearance? He began his regime in an illegal way, a contrived legal action by the court's biased stance. From the day he accepted the mantle, he has shown no regard for the laws of his land. With edicts and lies, he has tried to dismantle that same constitution he swore to defend. Now the power that governs Iraq holds no sway outside of that green zone, whether threatened or bribed. You can't alter that fact. This agreement is something those people will never condone. The flames of this warlord have shown no respect to the national borders up to now as of yet. Though the occupation has you in approval, would lack of a law mean the army's removal? The invasion was not legal. Don't forget. Breaking it down, here's a crime lord who wants legal cover for an act that began as a crime. Is he looking for ways to reduce his exposure? Or are there other motives this time? Without legal cover, the war will have died while he still was the acting commander-in-chief. For the first time ever, he'll be held responsible. Unrescued by Dad, just a plain, common thief. Now, into the circle files.